So there's obviously been um, a heck of a lot of work carried out at, at, at the top um, in terms of, um, I guess, kind of naval gazing and, and looking at um, which way that the organisation should go, how it should evolve, develop um, the, the strategy bit. And, and we, we've seen, as you say, some of that now in terms of communication, communicating more with members, um, more support from New Jelly in terms of um, supporting working more closely with the provinces. What what um, what strategies or what other strategies are in place? I, I'm, I'm sure there's lots. Um, perhaps just a couple of the things that you'd be happy to share of, of what we as members can, can expect to see um, yeah. differently moving forward. Well, we're working very hard on refreshing pathway, making it something that's really easy to use and very supportive of what the members are trying to do. There's digital marketing campaign do, being developed, um, which hopefully will be coming uh, September, October, probably September. And we'll be working very closely with the provinces for those that want to do it because it is interesting because I think all the provinces have got a, a, a waiting list now. Uh, and it, it says it all that as a result of the sort of coverage that members at, in Cheshire and other provinces have got, we've got a lot of people who say, do you know what, that could, that could just be for me. And so therefore, you know, and we've got to make sure that you know, they're, they're welcome, we bring them in, we look after them, and uh, you'll hear a lot about the che the, the other changes will be, we're talking about attraction, engagement, and it's, and we all know that there, you know, there are times when we're not able to get to our lodge meeting, but we need to stay in touch with those that aren't able to get there, and there are lots of membership officers and mentors and teams of people within individual lodges who do fantastic jobs, and we've got to make sure that sort of thing is done consistently across all lodges. Because if we do that and we look after our members, because we're a members organisation, we will thrive. So the sorts of things that are coming down the track are all about helping, about helping that and making it something that, as I jokingly said, we don't need a PhD to actually be able to do. This is very much something that will be practical and with the digital marketing campaign. And, and I, there's a lot of enthusiasm for it. I've had a lot of provincial grandmasters say we're really keen to get on with it and do this so a lot of work to be done between well now middle of may um hopefully it, stuff will start to be coming out to the, to the provinces so they can prepare get their websites ready and everything else that they need to get ready because there will be a lot to get ready um over the next three four months Please, please rest assured. We uh, we've been given the uh, the direction by our uh, Prince Thomas to the steering group, so we're uh, we're working hard in uh, in Cheshire. So uh, the message is getting through. Good. Now, Pleased to hear it. You, you may remember, but uh, you and I actually have met once before when you uh, um, invested our installed our uh, provincial grandmaster um, into his uh, position. Uh, I was one of the uh, volunteers sent to uh, to pick you up. Um, from Chester, I think we had a little... You mean guided tour, I remember. <laughs> yeah, a good guided tour, and then uh, then obviously we uh, we went to, to New Brighton for the uh, the ceremony. Um, obviously, your visit to Chachi will be the highlight, I'm sure, of, of all your um, provincial visits. Um, but I just wondered if you could perhaps share, share with us if, if, if the bit that you particularly enjoy going out to provinces, um, which was about the ceremonial... Um, role you have, but what is it you look out for and what, what is it you enjoy about going out to the provinces? I really enjoy meeting the members. Um, if uh, It's, you know, it's really nice to be able to get into the bar before before lunch or whatever and actually meet, meet members. Uh, and if I do, a, I remember I hadn't been Deputy Grand Master very long, I went and did a bicentenary in Bristol and uh, my first thing was grab my gin and straight down to the members, down to the members bar. And I remember very sadly, um, there was a chap who was uh, pretty advanced with cancer, but he was able to be there because he wanted to be his bicentenary. Had a nice long chat with him and his friends. Uh, sadly, he passed on uh, not that long after. But it's those sorts of interactions that, that I really, really value and really remember. Um, yeah. I, I, don't get me wrong, if, if you've been GDC or a deputy GDC, you do you enjoy the ceremonial part, but you know, 
what what really matters is actually meeting the members and the more i can meet the members when i do these things the happier i am it's fabulous and, and in terms of um, international travel does your role take you abroad much yeah um we go we go to districts i occasionally if the program master can't make it visit other grand lodges um nearly always on ceremonial uh, they tend to be fairly short in and out two days there and back maybe three depending on the time zone uh, but again it's uh, it's phenomenal to be able to go and see our members uh, there so i've been fortunate i have visited all bar bar the new zealand and the pacific i think i've been to every every continent that we that we have uh, a district. I haven't been to all districts yet. I, I don't want people thinking that I've, I've managed to get around all 34. I haven't, but I've done quite a chunk of them. You have to get New Zealand on the uh, on the bucket list then. Yeah, I, I suspect though the wife would say it would be for a holiday, not for masonry. <laughs> Fair comments. Um, now, obviously, you, you, you've said you, you've been a member for 40 years, and although very busy, uh, you know, in, in your your role, what does being a, a member mean for you personally? There are all sorts of layers within it. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of friends. I see my friends. I enjoy doing the ceremony. But at fundamentals, I would say that, um, and so the social side is very, very much part of it. But actually, someone once said to me what, and I think I said this in the Sky TV series, because I was asked a similar question in the Sky series. And I said, well, it encourages me to do the right thing, even in difficult circumstances. And what I mean by that is, you know, if there's something right, you've got to do it, even if it's not personally convenient, that actually it's much more important to do the right thing than something that's expedient. And I would say that's that's the what I would call the, the, the centerpiece with it. And I really enjoy the social and all the rest of it. About half my friends are Masons, half my friends aren't. So it's not, you know, it's not too restricted in that way. And that's because, you know, Masonry doesn't necessarily suit all everyone. Well, that, that's absolutely right. So that will be, that's really what I would call it, it's a reflection on what the ceremonies do. It's, and that's my particular take on it. And that's the bit that matters to me. It's a, a way of life, really. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, in, in, in terms of um, that Cheshire, we, we're actually going to festival um, later this year, and we'll be doing some, uh, some um, interviews, some webcasts with uh, senior members within Cheshire about festival and, and what that means to, to them and, and, and the, the, kind of the importance of it. From kind of UGLE's point of view, how important do you see kind of the, the, the period of festival, um, and what would you say to Cheshire Freemasons? Clearly, it's really important um, for the future of the Masonic Charitable Foundation. Um, what everyone needs to remember is that the Masonic Charities are there because they have one effective donor, which is the membership of UGLE. We are the donors. Some of our members happen to be beneficiaries as well, but they have one source, um, and it's... And therefore, a festival is a very important part of the ability of the Masonic Charitable Foundation and its and its um, previous the predecessor charities to make the difference. And yes, it it's monetary, and there's a lot of fun that can be had with these festivals. I've I've never seen it. My mother province is in festival at the moment, and I never cease to be amazed at the emails that come round with this fundraising idea, and someone's going to do something completely lunatic and are you going to support and, and things like that. So it can also be quite a, a good thing in terms of um, building a really strong esprit de corps. And I think that, yeah, it's really important to enable the MCF. I personally never get too head up about what is the target. It's just do your best and try and enjoy it. If, it, if you can't enjoy it, there's something there's something wrong yes yeah yeah okay so so we said we'd come back to communication um, and you, you've touched on it a, a, a couple of times um over the last few minutes so in terms of um i guess the, the change that's taken place and it, it's obvious for, for those of us not just involved on the communication side but just generally that we've gone from saying very little 
um, to, to now saying quite a lot. First annual report, um, as you referred to, um, more press interviews, TV interviews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, was that kind of a, the, the obvious thing to do? I guess the Enough is Enough um, campaign started that off. Um, or was there some resistance at the top or the higher levels? Or was, was it just the natural thing? You know, we, we now need to start filling this space that others are occupying. Um, it's been current for a long time. In fact, Enough is Enough was not started. The start was really the Sky TV series, uh, which was done in, a, in advance of the tercentenary. And it's and yes, we've been trying, but not, and then enough is enough was absolutely the right thing to do because we had to start confronting the untruths. You know, if you create a vacuum or allow a vacuum to develop, then what I think one of the things we've learned uh, the hard way is if people write the story and they're allowed to write the story without challenge, then that becomes the accepted truth. And we've all seen. I got terribly cross with. Um, line of duty, Jeb Mercurio with the casual throwing in a Masonic Lodge comment in the last series, and I thought, oh, here we go. And no, it didn't go that way, or the endeavour. So it's 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 something that we've allowed to develop for reasons which we understand, which was the sort of the reaction to the uh, traumas and the persecution of Freemasonry in the Second World War, but that was a very long time ago. So the real shift actually started with the Sky TV series, uh, and then enough was enough because the, the the perpetuating of the the myths that had been allowed to take hold, and enough was enough, and the uh, phrase on challenge and the real change, and it's been noticeable has been the combination of the work that all of our members have done with the pandemic, and an understanding when the meet and so now it's noticeable that rather than being nearly all the TV interviews I couldn't do one in the end, but nearly all of the TV interviews of when the Sky series came out were, were fine. They were, um, but there was this sort of, well, aren't you all a bit odd type thing. Whereas if you look at the more recent ones from the, um, the passing of the Duke of Edinburgh, where David Staples was interviewed about that, to all the interviews that have been done about the annual report and work that's been done in COVID, the, the conversation is completely different. And even, newspapers that have been relatively hostile now it doesn't this isn't going to be fixed overnight we will revert back for some of them i could i think you and i could probably both guess which newspapers might try and revert but there is now a, a more consistent theme which is very much more um understanding of what we do and how we do it oh for some reason my my zoom has decided to misbehave i'll just fix that um okay Oh, we want to play now. There we go. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. The um, so it's it's been it's been a it's been a bit of a journey, and, and actually it's really encouraging that all the work that the Grand Secretary and his comms team have put in is really paying off. And he was I was talking to him, and he said that the um, annual report story was all going to be about how much wealth there was in Freemasonry and it pivoted to actually we're looking we're looking to thrive we're looking to grow we're doing all sorts of things and very much more positive but it is largely done it's just the Grand Secretary and the comms team have have done their part but it couldn't have happened without the members doing what the members have done and I think that's what people need to realize it you know it really is down to you know the members doing what it is to be a Freemason and not being shy about it. One of the things that I, and I understand it entirely, you know, you try and get people to say what they've done in engagement with their community, and they're quite reticent because they don't want to be seen to be boasting. And I really do understand that. Um, but it's actually, it's not boasting. It is just saying this is what it is to be a Freemason. Mm. Yeah, I think as you say, it won't happen overnight. I think we've all, certainly many of the uh, the long-standing members um, haven't been talking about them, what, what they've been doing for, for many years. So it will take time. It'll, yeah. It's getting there, isn't it? And I know you, you, you mentioned um, new websites, um, or we're aware of the new website that, that's coming along and 
you mentioned the digital campaign. We're uh, we've interviewed a few of the UGLE's comms team. Oh right, good. Uh, yeah, we've interviewed Michelle and, and Sean, and I uh, think we've got Dean lined up for for next week. So we'll be chatting more about the new UGLE website then. Um, I, I, I think there's, I there's there's obviously a, a, a lot going on at the moment, and and it's nice to hear from you that the 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 media's um, response to, to, to UGLE and to Freemasonry in general has uh, has improved and been more supportive. Well, that's critical. Let's put it that way. Let's, let's, not, let's not rush our fences. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure you are, we are, we're all looking forward to the new season. Um, obviously, restrictions are, are being lifted and, and long may that continue. What are you hearing across the country then with regard to, to membership and, and members waiting? You've said that you believe there's a waiting list um, in most, if not all, of the provinces. Things are looking quite positive then? Yeah, uh, the, the two things really. One, there have been far fewer uh, resignations than people might have expected, which is really good. Uh, there has been a, an upsurge in people expressing interest in joining. We also have people that were already on the stocks. So I think a lot of lodges will be really busy and there's be a lot of encouragement from provinces saying well if you need it if you want an extra meeting we'll let you have a dispensation so you can do it and I would urge people to to get on and and to remember that um, when I was initiated a one-year wait was not a problem um, but in the in the age of more rapid communication we we also need to we also need to we also need to remember that you know that when people are looking for new things to do and this is one of the reasons for doing the digital marketing campaign now we know that people are looking for things that they want to do to to um, fill their time when COVID comes to an end and they're looking for things that are worthwhile we need to be able to respond so I would I would very much hope that you know. I can still hear my very first DC in my mother lodge saying, well, we've never done it that way. And we have to remember that there are different ways of doing things. We need to be ready to consider doing them without in any way uh, diminishing the traditions of the lodge. And we can do it. Yeah, yeah. No, very much so. And, and what would you say to somebody who is watching this who is perhaps um, interested in joining? Why wait? And read the mission statement, make sure it's something you want to do. But if it is, do get on with it. So, so lots of changes. Um, very exciting time for Freemasonry. Um, looking forward, um, looking forward with obviously our eyes wide open to deal with the challenges. Um, so what are your aspirations then? If we were to perhaps do this interview again in, in five years, what would you look back on and, and, and say, you know, we've achieved? What, what, what do you want over the next uh, few years? What would you like to see achieved? What I'd, what I'd really like to see is um, a consistent delivery across the provinces and districts of what we're trying to achieve and a thriving organisation where we are we're doing exactly what we say we do. That, that would be a big achievement where we, are, we do have good active members and keep on attracting good active people and retain the ones we've got and look after the members we've got engage with them so that they they enjoy their freemasonry that's what that's the only thing we can be judged on yeah it's all, all about enjoyment and what's a what a yeah. great great uh, great sentiment to uh, to finish on now we, we can't let you go with us without asking our last few questions we always have our five to start and five to finish so uh, if i may i'll just ask you the last few questions Duncan, what's the best holiday you've ever been on oh uh, it was my honeymoon to chile okay and, and one thing that most people don't know about you. Um, I paint 28 millimeter model soldiers with my son. Okay. Um, and what have you felt most proud of? What, sonically or? or... I'll, I'll leave that to you to answer. Oh, what have I felt most proud of? Gosh, uh, mm, you, you sort of got me there. I, you know, I don't tend to, I don't tend to think about uh, what I'm most proud of. Um, so I'll pass. Okay, no problem. Your a, a, a much easier question. Your favourite drink? 
dry martini, very dry. <laughs> and the last question, what do you wish we'd asked you during this interview? <laughs> I'm not answering that one either. <laughs> I think I'll leave that one there as well. Jonathan, thank you ever so much. I know you're very, very busy. Um, the phone's been going, emails have been calling in left, right and centre. So I'm, I'm just so grateful for you to, uh, to take the time. Oh, my pleasure, Nigel. It's been great fun. Thank you very much indeed for asking me. Thank you. Um, and we, we may come back and ask again in the future, if that's OK. Yeah, of course. Fabulous. Thank you. To all our viewers, we hope you found, found that very interesting. Please do stay safe, look after yourselves, and uh, we'll see you all again soon. Bye, everybody.